cut this light on and move it. Your mom said, I guess. Well, I got an awesome shot. Have it? Yeah. Okay, sure. That's pretty good. You okay. All right. Tell, tell them. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's a book after Revelation? No. Uh, Doris Lucas. <laughs> yeah, y'all tickle me. Well, here we are again, and it is Wednesday. What's the date? Today is what, 16? Yes. And we are still in Passover. Remember that Passover is considered Passover because God told the children of Israel that he would pass over them when he brought judgment upon Egypt. And I want people to, you know, to, to recognize that God is loving, God is kind. He's long-suffering and he's merciful. But he's also a jealous God and he's also a God of vengeance. And these are attributes of God that people have a tendency to forget about. You know, uh, yeah, they, they have a tendency to forget about that. And you know, but I want people to understand that what his word says, we believe that not one jot, one tittle will fall. Mm -hmm. Then we have to believe all that all of the totality of what the word says. It simply says what? It would be better to have a millstone tied around your neck and be cast into the sea than to offend one of my little ones. But what has happened through the years is folk have got slack. They've lost their fire. They've lost their anointing. Therefore, people have not seen the retribution of God. And then sometimes they did and didn't recognize what was going down. Yeah. So sometimes that's what the problem was. Sometimes they didn't recognize it. And I bet you wonder why I'm going into this. But the reason being is because I'm going to talk to you and just remind you about what happened during the Passover. Now let's stop and, and, and go back and look at this. We know that Pharaoh, he did not pay attention to Moses. He mocked Jehovah. He mocked Yahweh and said, oh, you serve an invisible God. And as far as Pharaoh was concerned, Moses was doing just doing magician tricks. Since Moses had been part of the court, that he knew all the mysteries of Egypt. So he felt like Moses just came back and was doing stuff that remember, remember the challenges? Moses would do something and then and then the, the magicians or the bad guy or the, the witches, the you know, the wizards would do stuff. And it was back and forth. Pharaoh even said, oh, your God is invisible. You know, he was mocking him. And many, many times people will mock you when you serve God. They will. They did it to David. They, they told David, uh, uh, where is your God? You know, what hope do you have in your God? And that's because what he said there was a conspiracy. That people had conspired. In other words, a, a bunch of folk have come together to do some mischief mm -hmm. against someone. And so all of this is part of the Passover. And when it boiled down to it, God told Moses, he told he gave the instructions to the house of Israel and told them what to do with the lamb. And they told them to take that blood when they made that sacrifice and put it on the doorpost. Now, I need some of you guys to uh send in some inbox and stuff or make some you know statements that everybody can see because I know the unction fell Monday night mm -hmm. and I know that the power of God fell in your homes I, I know because I know what happened where we were and as I was praying I was visualizing God putting his blood over the doorpost on my job not just at my house and somebody is just linked up with me. You wondered what you were feeling. You thought that's what it was. That's what you, that's what you felt. Yeah, you felt it. Because see, the reason why is I just felt that it hit your legs and your lower, below your calves on both legs down into your feet. So you just linked up with me. I just, so I know, yeah, you've been feeling the unction on your job. And you said, man, what's going on? This thing is real. 
on my job, they've been saying that it's muggy. Mm. But what it is, the power of God is over the main entrance and the side entrance. Now, we're not even talking about inside my department. Mm. The auction is inside my department. We had people from other departments come through. Uh, one of the one of the, the uh, U.S. mail persons come through. They said it's muggy down here. It wasn't muggy. It was the anointing. Mm -hmm. It was God's presence. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, I told y'all to anoint your doorposts in your house. You know, other, other parts of your house, and you've been feeling a change there. And see, it's a new thing for you. By the way, you can still take that same oil bottle or. If you got water or whatever, like I said, uh, a prayer cloth, a handkerchief, a washcloth, a towel, use your imagination. Anything that God's Spirit gets on becomes unctionized. It becomes anointed. It's just freaking y'all out because it's happening over the internet. Y'all are not quite used to these kind of manifestations. But I got news for you. This is normal. This is how things are supposed to be. So, part of uh, your edification for this week is to come into greater knowledge of what, what is possible. I know this is a new thing for y'all, perhaps for the power of God to move like this, and you're sitting watching the internet, or watching on your tablet, or watching on your phone. But God's presence is everywhere. His presence doesn't always manifest mm -hmm. everywhere. That's what the thing, he's, he's omnipresent. He's omniscient. But what happens is, remember the Bible talks about things being made manifest. It means to bring, come to fruition or to happen. So now you're getting a much clearer indication of what is available to you in the realm of the Spirit. Now, uh, what we're going to talk about tonight, we're going to talk about the manifestations that took place for the children of Israel. Well, doesn't that Bible say that we have a better covenant? But part of our better covenant is learning how to lock in on things that happened under the old covenant, bring them into the New Testament era, and get the full benefit. See, I've realized that one reason why People who don't believe in Yeshua, you know, the Jews, they're still in this old covenant. But what they come together during those feasts. I don't care if they're, they're uh, devout or not. They show up for Passover. They show up for Pentecost. And they show up for Tabernacles. Yeah. And, you know, some of them come to all of them, all the feasts. And see, in my maturation as a Christian, I'm learning to tap into what's available to me. And what I have always believed in is, I don't believe in hoarding stuff for myself. What good is that? What good is that? We're supposed to share what God gives to us in the body. All I want to do is help you to become a more effective Christian, and then you can go out and bless somebody else. Because that's what the whole thing is about. So what we're going to talk about is tonight is the blessings that God gave to the children of Israel by them going through Passover and what they were to look forward to. Now, we know the whole thing that works with God is, is obedience. As you obey God, that's what causes things to happen. And then many, many times, my son will say, well, Dad, how come so and so and so? I said, well, I just do what God told me to do. I said, so it's, it's not really that hard for me uh, to, to expect God to do stuff because I just do what God tells me to do. Because I know that I, I don't have the power to do it myself. And, and I, if I'm a conduit, then I just do what God tells me to do. Then God got the honor his word. And it's learning how to trust him and honor what he tells you to do. And as you do that, God will prove himself. That's what's going on now. There are a lot of things going on. Yeah, I wish I could tell y'all about some of the stuff that's going on. But I will say this. 
someone who has defied me for over 30 years, they're coming to the conclusion that they better leave it alone. Now, it's a shame it's taken them that long, but at the same time, things have gone down. They're seeing some stuff, and they're coming to the conclusion they better get this thing right. And see, it's only been mercy and grace that things have gone on as long as they have. Because some folk that have come against me ain't here to tell the story today. And I'm just, you know, I'm just telling the truth of the matter. Boy, I felt the unction hit somebody's hands when I said that. Yeah, it's just that real. But because of God's mercy and grace, some of the stuff that's been done in persecution, had it been thousands of years ago, this wouldn't have gone on like this. It's only been, I've had to be long suffering because we're in the New Testament grace and because of the grace given unto it. And the whole thing about this, remember, it's unmerited favor. You do nothing for it. It's that God just got his hand on a person and God's just merciful to that person. See, I think about all those years after I told God, knowing the calls on my life since I was 10, and I tell God I'm about between 14 and 15, I don't want to preach. Yet, God in his mercy and grace, in the very year I told God that I wasn't going to preach, the devil tried to kill me. I tell God my freshman year in high school that, that I wasn't going to preach against somebody else to do it. That same summer after freshman year, the devil tried to kill me. When my brother and I had that wreck outside of Burlington, we could have we could have been killed. My brother was thrown outside the car. Neither one of us was wearing a seatbelt. And I had the steering wheel. I could have hit it out of the way and just up here. And just have the scarlet in my head today. I could have gone through the windshield. You know, and it was a tremendous drop. My my brother wound up sitting between the rail and the and, and the rear tire on the left hand side. He's sitting, holding his wrist, and he was thrown out of the car. And we were doing 50 miles an hour. Then the car hydroplaned. So you know, and we went down in the groove. So we picked up speed, and we hit the rail. So God had mercy on both of us. Both of us could have been killed, you know. So it's something to think about. But I want you to think about how God protected the children of Israel. And some of you guys need protection. A lot of times you may have an enemy on your job that you don't know about until God reveals it unto you. I'm telling you, the Lord showed me some folk on my job where enemies of mine, I was astounded. A lot of times you got enemies you don't know they're enemies until the Lord reveals it unto you. And you know, God will confuse and confound your enemies. At any rate, God told the children of Israel, and we're going to break it down the way that it's uh, been broken down, that he would do seven things for them. Now, it kind of reminds me of uh, how I've heard people teach and preach about uh, give and it shall be given unto you. Press down, shake together, running over, shall be given to your bosom. I think some people have counted it out five, some people counted out six. Well, what they've done, they've like taken the verses and and, you know, we, we, we have and, and and is what? It's a correlating conjunction. And so it joins together two thoughts. So that has a lot to do with the way that this group, yeah, that there's been grouped now. We're going to break it down tonight. And uh, turn in your Bibles to the book of Exodus. Boy, I felt that when I said that. I knew something mighty is going to happen tonight. And uh, we're going to talk about that. And, you know, I think last time I spoke from the Amplified Version, but, uh, you know, there's not a great deal of difference in the Amplified Version. You know, it's Amplified King James and the, and the regular uh, King James. But um, sometimes I do like to read out of both. Sometimes just to... Uh, see whatever differences there are. And so I'm going to read out of this. If you go, if you go through Passover, these are the seven blessings 
that God will bring. In fact, I'm going to let you understand tonight that even though I, I started in that Monday night, but tonight the Lord told me to really hone in on it, and I'm going to be praying these seven blessings over you and your household. So I guess you could say in a way tonight is kind of like sealing it. We're, we're just a few days into Passover, and we're going to have a meeting, our usual meeting on Sunday night, so that's still doing Passover. Boy, I felt that. Somebody felt that in their toes. Somebody's really linking up with me here. So that's a good thing. Uh, so I know God's going to do something for you. And whoever that lady was that I had that word of knowledge, I, I'd appreciate if you would let us know um, what God did for you. I think you were a bit astounded when I told you that God told me about your ailment hours before we went on the air. But God does things like that with me with the word of knowledge. I mean, I've had uh, things hit me prior to going to church. One time I was taking a shower. And while I was taking a shower, and um, my hand went numb. I thought the enemy was attacking me. And I was, you know, in the shower rebuking the devil <laughs> because my hand went numb. You know, we and we were going to church out of town. We were, you know, going to Rocky Mountain, North Carolina, from Tarboro, only, you know, only 15 miles or so. But uh, and when I got to church, I had that same feeling. Then I realized that's what it was. I was discerning what was going to happen before I got there. So for me, I've been doing it such a long time. I don't think twice about it. And I do believe too. Some of you have the gift of the certain spirits and word of knowledge, and you're having things happen to you, and you maybe don't quite understand what's going on with you. But God will show you things before they happen. You know, the word calls it deja vu, but the word, the word of God calls it the word of knowledge. Uh, so you sometimes I do see things in a dream or vision, but sometimes I'm completely awake. And I will just start feeling ailments. And a lot of times I have to ask the spirit, you know, what's going on? And that's what happened uh, when it happened about uh, 1130 uh, Monday morning. I said, Lord, is this a man or a woman? And the Lord said it was a woman. And, you know, so it's like sometimes you have to question the Lord. You have to question the Holy Spirit as to, you know, you're, you remember the Bible says we see no prophesying part. Sometimes we get a glimmer. Sometimes it's like the veil's pulled back. We see everything. And then sometimes we get a glimmer. We see parts of what's going on. The Lord will speak something to you. You go like, okay. And sometimes, sometimes we misinterpret the impression. Sometimes we think it's our mind. No, you're not crazy. The Lord has been speaking to some of y'all, and y'all are having a time, probably because maybe your pastor does not move in the gifts of the Spirit. Therefore, you know, you can't really talk to him about it. But I was saying to you, if you got some questions, inbox me. You know, I'm, I'm not just saying it just to be saying it. I'm saying it for your edification. Uh, and people ask questions. And we don't mind answering questions. We, we encourage it. And I'm going to say the same thing they say in school. There is no such thing as a dumb question. <laughs> And believe you me, somebody else out there is thinking the same thing that you are. It may not be exactly what you're talking about, but it may be close. It may be a variation of some of the same questions that you might have on your mind or heart. So don't feel bad about asking questions. I'm not afraid to ask questions. Uh, I'm a curious person in natural anyway. I wanted to know two weeks ago. So... Don't feel bad about that, but um, allow God to continue to move with you because I believe a lot of things have transpired with a bunch of y'all since Monday night, and I believe that you've gone into new territory because that was a powerful unction fail Monday night, and so there's a lot of things going on, and I'm just believing that uh, there's going to be some really good testimonies out of this Passover season. One thing I have learned is when you obey God and do what he tells you to do, he shows up. And that's the cool part about it because it's him. I'm just a conduit. 
I'm just a guide. And I'm actually showing and telling you what God is showing and telling me. So we're on a journey together. And it's a lot of fun. So uh, just hang on and we'll just continue to do this. Okay, um, Exodus 23rd chapter, I'm sorry. Uh, 23rd chapter, the 20th verse. Now, the first blessing is this, is that, excuse me, you will get angelic intervention, intervention in your life. Let me read it from the regular King James Version. It says, Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. So that's God saying, I have prepared it, and I'm going to send an angel, okay? Amplified Version says this, Behold, I send a, or an angel, in the way we speak English today, before you, remember you got your vowels, and so you always have an and in front of a vowel. I, re I remember my English. You know, I, I remember it better than a lot of people do. So it says, Behold, I send an angel before you, to keep and guard you on the way. So that's the angelic intervention. Now, remember, the and here is a correlating conjunction. Yeah, we're going to have a little English class while we're doing this. And so we're taking two different thoughts and combining them in the same sentence. So you can say that the second part is divine guidance. And again, in the original King James Version, it says, Behold, I will send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way, and here's the correlating conjunction in, and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Okay? So, M5 version will say, here's divine guidance to bring you into the place I have prepared. So, we got really two things that the Holy Spirit is doing, and it is put in the same sentence. Now, there's a footnote that you could go to in Genesis. So write it down, Genesis 16 and 7, which gives you another example of, the, of an angel showing up. And this, and but the angel of the Lord found her by the spring of water, by the wilderness on the word that's sure. So, so the thing about it is, is I want you to understand that angels are real. If you believe in a supernatural God, you have to believe in angels. If you believe in God, then you have to believe in Satan. Satan is a fallen angel. So, if you, so then we know that we got the fallen angels, which we call demons. Okay? Unclean spirits. So angels are very, very real. Now, generally when I see angels, they, they, they appear to me as men. When I see them in dreams, you know, this happened before. Remember? Was it Joshua? When he saw the angel, he saw the angel, he didn't know what it was. He, he asked him, well, you fall so against me. I'm not for neither. He said, I'm, I'm the captain and host of the Lord. So he saw an angel, but he appeared as a man. So when I see angels so far, I've not seen angels with wings, but I hear wings. I hear the fluttering of wings. I hear the noise, the flapping of wings. Sometimes they're to my left, sometimes they're to my right. And I know that the angel is standing to the corresponding side where I hear the flutter. So it doesn't bother me as long as God reveals himself because I know without the angelic host, things are not going to manifest. But I believe as time progresses, I'm going to see angels appear with wings on them. But, you know, it's no big deal. So... If you see men, sometimes in dreams, sometimes they're not men, they're actually angels. And some of y'all are probably having an aha moment right now and going like, oh, okay, it was really a supernatural occurrence. So always pay attention to those things. So these are actually the first two blessings that God gives you. Behold, I sent an angel before you to keep and guard you on the way. That's the angelic intervention. And then the divine guidance is 
to bring you to the place I have prepared. Remember what did Jesus say? He said, I have to leave, but I'm not going to leave you comfortless. I'm going to have the Holy Spirit. Well, the Holy Spirit works in conjunction with the angels. So remember, the angels are part of the host of the Lord. So a lot of things that are done by the direction of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, is through the angels doing things. So we want to really have a good, close, tight relationship with the angels that are around us. They're here to minister to and for us, for are we not the heirs of salvation? As the word says, okay. Now, the third blessing of God. We're still in the book of Exodus, 23rd chapter. Go to the 22nd verse. And it says, If thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies and an adversary unto thine adversaries. And this is a part of what the Lord was having me prep some of y'all. Because that kind of freaks some people out. Um, yes, we are to pray for our enemies. And yes, we are to be peaceful with people. But remember, he said, Vengeance is mine. I will repay. So the whole thing about it is, that's why we keep our hands off of it. Mm -hmm. And if anything happens, God does it. And, you know, sometimes I probably we want to help God out. And at times people do tempt, yeah, you know, not just you. Uh, I've been tempted a lot of times the last 35, 36, 37 years. Um, and the thing about it is, is, God, again, is the only righteous judge. Therefore, whatever he mets out is always righteous. That's why I, you know, I had to remind a young lady the other week, she was kind of concerned because some people had been coming against her and her, and her husband, and stuff had been happening to her. But I told her, I said, but you didn't do it. You know, and you were praying for the Lord to bless them, but if they're hard-headed, Blessing turns to a curse. It does. Yeah. And that's that's just the word. So the thing about it is, is the Bible says that a wise person will take rebuke. You know, and some folk, it takes a stronger rebuke. Mm -hmm. Some people will back off, leave stuff alone. I remember some people were uh, against me on my job years ago when I worked for the Postal Service. And I saw in a dream where this man was. Uh, working witchcraft. Man lived in Burlington. He had been a vet, done pool his 20 years, and was working, you know, in a casual position. Because he, he was getting 100%, you know, money from his uh, army stuff. But he was jealous. He got jealous of me. And he was trying to work witchcraft. So all I did was just rebuke them about everything that was coming at me. And the Bible says that the enemy shall come before you one way and flee before you seven. And so I just got rebuked him. And when I did, everything he tried to put on me went back on him. And the Lord showed me that he had gone back to his root doctor. And the root doctor said, that man saved. <laughs> and so I remember I went to the back to get some mail, and you saw fear on his face. But there's no telling he may have seen the anointing on me. But he left me alone, which was fine. You know, so it didn't take a real strong rebuke, he got rebuked and he left it alone. What happens is, some folk won't leave it alone. In fact, there's some people, they'll find out you saved, they'll get worse. I mean, we see this in the example of Pharaoh. Yes. Like, Pharaoh was trill. Yeah. It's like, you know, the frogs and the lice would have straightened me up, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like, his son had to die. Yeah. You know what's interesting about that story, though? Um, I had dealt with it again. And it's easy, like it, it was, you know, God is all powerful. And, you know, Moses grew up in the court. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, those tricks he had already seen. And, you know, the way that God orchestrated it. When I first read it before, I was thinking, like, oh man, Pharaoh's going blow for blow for God. 
but we know in actuality that's not even possible. So what was really happening? Like what was really happening was God was in a sense mocking Pharaoh. Like, look, this is your magic. Like, I'm I'm doing all the things that your magicians do. You know, so that's why it wasn't necessarily impressed with Pharaoh. Neither was it really impressed with Moses because he already saw it. But when God, uh, then when God started doing his signature moves, then things got crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it was just cool to see how, uh, um, you know, and I was trying to figure out, okay, why, uh, you know, of course, you know, God has got to make himself, you know, show himself to be God. But it's like, it wasn't necessarily for Moses or Pharaoh. It was to impress those two million Jews out there. Like, oh, wow. You know, that hadn't seen, you know, this type of stuff going on from their God in such a long time. So it was like, wow, God. Like, when you show up, you show your power over everything. Like, not only am I God, but, like, all the little tricks that you do, <laughs> you know, I've, I got that too. That's, you know, I, I often think about, I could imagine what it was like when... Moses' rod turned into that snake and devoured. Eight, rods, yeah, eight yes. theirs. I mean, that's like, like oh man. Yeah. You know? It's like God is the ultimate chess. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's like, you know, much less, like you said, the lice and the frogs. You kind of think that you would, you know, back off. But it's hard, hardened. And sometimes that's what happens when people come against you. Sometimes their heart will harden and they'll get more determined. That they're going to try to defeat you. The enemy will trick them like that. It'll be a combination of pride, jealousy, and they won't leave stuff alone. So that's why God says, I will be an adversary to your adversaries. I'll be an enemy to your enemy. And there are times when God just has to prove himself because folk don't want to believe stuff. You know, so uh, in the Amplified Version, it says, in other words, you can say it's like destruction of the adversaries. And in the Amplified Version says, but if you will indeed listen to and obey his voice and all that I speak, then I will be an enemy to your enemies and adversary to your adversary. So the thing about it is, and I, you know, I've seen this stuff go down. Uh, sometimes that people have been so blind that they didn't realize it was God that was rebuking them. I mean, I've known somebody whose child got bad off sick and almost died. I've known people that have strokes and heart attacks. Folk that were trying to make me sick that way. I think about how uh, I got accused of uh, evil when somebody got a, had a heart attack and prostate cancer. But they were trying to do that to me. And it went back on them. But they, you know, they're hard hearted and you want to acknowledge the real God. So, you know, and God has many different ways how he will prove, God will prove himself. All you got to do is continue to obey him, trust in him, and he will show up. And when he shows up, he shows himself strong. And rest assured, people are going to be shaken. They've already been starting to be shaken and before this, before we get to Tuesday in this thing, there's no telling what's going to happen. Because I am looking for God to do some tremendous things as we're going through this Passover. So, again, look for God to do things for you. And we're going through... Uh, this country, really the world, is going through a rough time financially. Um, let's face it, most of our manufacturing is overseas. Americans are certainly suffering because we don't have the manufacturing base we once had. And what few jobs, there are a lot of jobs in the service industry, but the service industry doesn't pay that well. Excuse me, some of y'all are probably working two or three jobs trying to make ends meet, and we're just going to believe God's going to bring you a breakthrough that you can get some money to come in and God to work some things out that you can get uh, debts paid. You know, you know, I've had folk tell me that word ministers that God did not cancel debts. And I'm going like, well, how do you figure that? 
you know. But see, uh, uh, the late prophet Kenneth Hagin Sr., he always talked about when you get into a conversation with people that you locate them. And he's right because when you talk with people, you find out what they believe. And I'm like, okay, you believe God can heal cancer. You believe God can heal heart attacks. You actually believe that God can save a sin sick soul. But he can't cancel debts. That's too hard for him. That's too hard for God? That doesn't make sense, does it? Yeah, I mean, you'd be surprised you talk to folk and I'm, they'll look at you like you're crazy. And I'm going like, well, no, you're the one that's crazy. Because you're telling me that God can't cancel debts. That God can't. And I know for a fact that God fixed it so one time they couldn't even find information on the computer about us. It was gone. I've, I've known that happen twice. I mean, what do they think that the miracle was whenever Jesus told Peter to go find the money in the mouth of the fish? Right. Like That's, they, they owed that money. Yeah. It was time to pay taxes. <laughs> yeah. That was debt cancellation. Your taxes and money. And I think what happens a lot of times, son, you hit, you hit the nail on the head. They can't see the forest for the trees. You know, they what it is, they don't, they don't think of it in those terms, but that's right. Jesus said, go look. And the money was in the mouth of the fish. Yeah. And our taxes got paid on that debt cancellation. Because, yeah. yeah, they owed them taxes. They owed them taxes. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. You know, and, and that's what it was. It was debt cancellation. So, folk miss it. Sometimes God will fix it so God will either give you the money, supernaturally, or supernaturally, they can't find the debt. Mm -hmm. I mean, who are we to tell God how to do it? All we know is we do for God to bring debt cancellation. Now, it's no harder for God to touch somebody's heart to write you a check than it's for him to go in and have an angel do something to the computer yeah. and pay the debt. It's just digits. Or, or delete it. It's digital digits. It's all yeah. Digits. I mean, what gets to me? I'm amazed how folk want to limit what God can do. And that, what gets to me is they are so limited in their thinking that they don't realize that they're limiting God. Yeah, they want to look at you like what you're saying is like witchcraft or spooky or something. Yeah, I'm more like, well, how can you not believe that God will not counsel the debt? But you believe God will save somebody? Yeah, you can cancel that debt. Oh, but God, but God can heal cancer. Stage four cancer. God can heal strokes and heart attacks, but he can't cancel a debt. That Bible tells me, it says, is there anything too hard for God, for me? Mm -hmm. See, this, this is the dilemma that you run into with the brethren. And, one, you know, the, the people I'm talking about are pastors. You could maybe say, okay, maybe a lay person would think that. But there are people who are called, they're anointed. But there's a lot of stuff they don't believe God for. Mm -hmm. So, those of you who can believe God, I made a whole lot of folks think about this thing because it's obvious the Lord had me do this. Somebody out there is having a hard time wrapping their head around God canceling debts. But yeah, he does that too. What you got to do is take the limit off of it. A lot of times God can't do things for people because they don't believe him for it. So, now God is merciful sometimes and does it anyway. Again, to prove himself. But just think about what would happen if you would just believe him. So look at Exodus 23, 25. And it says, And ye shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water. And I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. Now, Amplified Version says it like this. It's a miraculous financial breakthrough. You shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless your bread and water. Now, the second part of it, remember, again, we got the correlating conjunction here. 
It says, and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. So in other words, miracle healing and health says, I will take sickness from your midst. So again, if you don't believe God to heal you, sometimes God will have mercy on you and, and do this. One of the best examples I can give you is uh, the late W. R. W. Shambach told this story. Uh, it was a young lady, I think the young lady had cancer. The young lady was saved. She's a Christian. And really, she was uh, preparing herself to go be with the Lord. She had lost a lot of weight, couldn't keep food down. But she was rejoicing because she knew she was getting ready to go be with Jesus. And so she was sitting up reading her Bible. And I believe she was in Isaiah 53. And she got to read those verses. And she was reading it and she would stop and thank the Lord. But then when she got down to that part about him bearing our sickness and by his stripes, ye are healed. She said, wait a minute. Let me look at that again. And she saw it said, by his stripes. Ye are healed. She got a rhema word. The logos, the written word, became a rhema. It became a revelation unto her. The veil got pulled back, and she realized that word was for her. And when she saw that, she said, wait a minute. The word says I'm healed. She got the call of the mom. She was upstairs, Mama, Mama, Mama got scared. She said, oh, Lord, my baby's getting ready to die. You know, I'm getting ready to talk to him for the last time. She told Mama, she said, go fix me something to eat. Hmm. She, thought the mom, she thought the daughter was losing her mind. So, oh, Lord, she done got delirious. I said, Mama, I haven't lost my mind. She said, I just read the word here. And I see that the word says I'm healed. Now, see, she was going to a church where they didn't preach divine healing. So, a lot of times, if they're not teaching and preaching that, you don't believe it. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing. Hearing by the word of God. But what happened was, she read that word for herself, mm -hmm. got a revelation, and grabbed it. Mm -hmm. Her mama cooked for her. She went downstairs and ate and didn't throw up. And proceeded to get completely healed of the disease. So, you got to grab hold of this word for yourself. Because some of y'all must be wrestling and maybe wavering about not only financial prosperity, but for your healing. Boy, I felt that in my hands when I said that. So whoever you are, get this thing straight in your spirit. Miracle provision is for you. It's part of your covenant. Part of the word sal salvation actually means healing in totality in every area of your life. Boy, I feel the unction in my hands. Somebody's getting it. So when I start praying tonight, you're going to get it. Man, that got stronger. You felt it in your hands. See, we're linking up in the spirit. That's how this thing is supposed to work. So God is going to do some miracles. Y'all going to get some miracles of finance and some healings. Really going to get some miracles. Because some of y'all have been struggling in both areas. Some just one, but many people you've been struggling in both. In fact, some of you, you've been so sick you haven't really been able to work. But God's going to fix it, so he's going to take care of all that for you tonight. And the last, the last two, boy, I feel this function going on. Same chapter, 23rd chapter of Exodus, and we're going to the 30th verse. In the King James Version, it says, By little and little I will drive them out from before thee. 
until thou be increased and inherit the land. Now, really he's talking about driving out the enemies. Mm -hmm. All them, as your as your grandfather would say, better better Sterling Watkins Jr. Mm -hmm. drive out all them ites. Yep. <laughs> you know, and we got lots of ites in our lives. Instead of the high bites, jebusites, and all the rest of it, we got ites in our lives. Sometimes it's family, sometimes the so-called friends, sometimes the folk on our jobs. Uh, and then, you know, you just have the enemy just coming at you from all angles through all kinds of people. Because just like God uses folk to bless you, the enemy uses folk too. So sometimes you're, the, the demonic entity is moving in a person. Sometimes they're moving outwardly, but some people are demon-possessed. Mm -hmm. And demon-possessed people don't always manifest the demon that's in them. Or demons, sometimes when the Spirit of God gets to moving, then they start crying out and manifesting themselves. So, I believe God's going to do something here. Again, increased territory, an amplified version. Little by little, I will drive them out from before you until you have increased Remember the uh, prayer of Jabez says to enlarge my territory. The word also says that every way you tread the soles of your feet, you shall what? He's given to you. You possess it. You know, so you have to start walking in that covenant. Because see, people will cheat you. They will. And they'll do it with you looking right at them. And they'll, they'll still be crazy and defiant and still do stuff to defraud you, to cheat you. Now, again, in the King James Version, it says, until thou be increased in the correlating conjunction and inherit the land. In other words, you inherit what God has promised you. Your inheritance. And I'm sure there are many of you out here listening to me, either live or in the archive. God has talked to you on a personal basis. He's either talked to you directly through a dream, through a vision, um, maybe indirectly through prophecy, or you just got revelation by reading his word. And you know what God has promised you, and those uh, promises have not been made manifest. Well, we are believing tonight that all the bondage is coming off and that you are going to inherit the promised land. In other words, the M5 version says, are numerous enough to take possession of the land. So we're going to believe that the seven things, I'm going to go over them again before I begin to pray. And uh, if you haven't gotten your oil in front of your speaker, go do it now. Go get, like I said, your water or whatever it was. You can you you can use the same thing you had Monday night or grab something else. And if you want to, you could go get uh, an article of clothing. It could be an undergarment. It could be your socks. Uh, it could be a blouse. It could be a shirt. And you could just lay it on the speaker or speakers. So we believe very strongly in the power of transference. Some of you, what you can do, you can lay your hand uh, on your tablet or your PC. There's another way. When I was on the radio uh, back in the 90s, I used to tell people all the time to lay their hand on the radio as a point of contact. You know, remember the Bible says in Acts 19 11, and, and God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul, so the hands of Abraham were, were placed on, upon his body as he preached, and then he gave them out. And it says diseases and the spirits departed from them. Folk got healed. So this is just another means of the same utilization of God's spirit. Same principle. So take the limit off of God. And come into the supernatural and believe God to do something miraculous. So hopefully by now you've gone and gotten what you need to get. And what we're going to do, 
We're just going to go over these seven blessings real quickly. And then we're just going to pray and just believe God just to do something. Uh, we're in stride now on this Passover. So let me go over it again. Number one would be angelic intervention in your life. Behold, I send an angel before you to keep and guard you on the way. Number two, divine guidance to bring you to the place I have prepared. God's got a place prepared for you. Not just when you get with him in New Jerusalem. He's prepared something for you here in this realm. Uh, the third blessing, the miracle, destruction of the adversary. Then believe me, you do have them. You may not know it, but you get you have you have them. If you say you got enemies, you, if I got news for you, if you're not saved, you got enemies. Mm -hmm. What happens sometimes is when you get saved, they increase. Because sometimes the folk that were your friends turn on you, and then sometimes you find out they just want your friend from the jail. Mm -hmm. You know, some sometimes envy will hide itself in friendship. As my grandmother, Lucy Rose Taylor, told my mama was, she said, watch your friends because they're the people who get close to you. They're in your circle. See, if you know you and so-and-so don't get along, y'all ain't tight. That's very obvious. Yeah. You so know. there's no need to keep my enemies closer. That's stupid. Yeah, it is It is stupid. It sounds cool. But it's, it's stupid. It, right, it is. It is. It's just the opposite. I told a guy that too because his older brother told him that, so he took that at heart. And, I, and, and that's just a reiteration of what somebody else has said. Yeah, in a movie. Yeah. It comes out of a movie. Right. Why are we basing, why are we basing our lives in wow. truth on, a, on something we heard in the movie? But people do it, though. Popular <laughs> culture winds up being what folk do. Exactly. And I told him, I said, no. I said, no. Yeah. I said, mm. I said, you watch your friends. I said, because remember, they're the folk close to you. They can do more damage. Yeah. That's how people come to uh, their beliefs most times. Mm -hmm. What they've seen. It's, it's exactly. What, you know, good. Yeah. What, what did Jesus say? Jesus said, did I choose you 12 and one of you have a devil? <laughs> then he said, one of you is a devil. You know? And they all looked at each other and were baffled. Even when he told Judas, he said, and they were looking confused, he said, the one that I give the sock. And he told them, he said, do what you do, go do it quickly. And they still were perplexed. So sometimes I say, Lord, thank you for mercy, because those being walked with you three and a half years with you directly, and they still did not always understand what you were saying. So that's something to think about, isn't it? You know? Okay. Uh, the third blessing, destruction of adversaries, if you will indeed listen to it and obey his voice and all that I speak, then I'll be an enemy to your enemies and an adversary to your adversary. You need God to take care of stuff for you. You know, you need to let him handle it. And I know a lot of times we're tempted to handle it ourselves. Rest assured, I have been tempted. I have been in situations where I could have physically done something. And, and, and by the laws, a man would have been right. Had witnesses. But I thought about, Lord, this still might bring reproach to the ministry, and I held back. When I when in the natural, I had every right to strike back at a person. But when I got too fast in praying, and, yeah, the Holy Ghost got to do his stuff. They had the book. They had to leave. They didn't want to. They had never been defeated before. They had never been defeated before. They actually had, had done something so dirty, they had actually burned some, a family up in the house, and the law couldn't, couldn't prove it. They knew he had done it, but they couldn't prove it. But the reason why they couldn't was because he was in the witchcraft. But he found out the witchcraft didn't work when he come in. He battled for about six months, but he had to move. He had to go. So God took care of the situation. He hurt up and left. He had to leave. So God will fight your battles. It's just like the word says. Then, uh, number four, miraculous financial breakthrough. So you shall serve the Lord your God, and he will bless your water and your bread and water. And then, then five, miracle healing and health, and I will take sickness from your midst. Sixth, increase territory. Little by little, I will drive them out before you until you have increased. And seven, inherit the promised land, and are numerous enough to take possession of the land. So God will take care of all 
those things for you. And these are part of the blessing that come because you observe the Passover. Ain't that a lot better than, than the very Easter? Oh, I better than very nice. All you're going to do is get some crackers and drink some juice and get up early. Yeah. And you don't want to do that Sunday anyways. Yeah. You know, so we're going to observe the Christian holiday. We're going to observe the Passover. Now, I know some of y'all still might go out Sunday morning, but <laughs> they call it Resurrection Sunday now. But uh, make sure you pay close attention to Passover. Uh since I got the revelation, you know, I dropped all that. You know, so I dropped all that sunrise certain stuff. <laughs> you know, so you know, you do what you want to do, but you know, I'm just running stuff down to you. Um, so again, we're we're going to believe God for these seven miracles to manifest in your life and in your household. So, what I want you to do is, I want you to say that. Father God, I believe in the seven miraculous blessings of the Passover, and I'm looking for your spirit to manifest all these blessings in my life and in my family's life, in my household. Yeah, I'm believing for God to do some tremendous things this week. And now uh, we're getting ready to go to the throne of grace. Father, I thank you for a continuation of what you have been doing since the Passover started, Lord, at sundown on Monday. And Lord, I just thank you and I just praise you, Lord, for what you're doing, how you're giving us edification. And we are learning, Lord, how to lean on you and how to trust you, Lord, as we come to you in your feast. Lord, You, this was a commandment that you said it was a set time, an appointed time. A season, which is a set time, Lord, to come before you. Father, we thank you and we praise you, Lord, for what you are doing, Lord. I thank you for the edification. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you've been merciful to us, Lord, when we didn't even know what to do during this time. Lord, you even blessed us through this time, Lord, when we didn't even understand. But I pray, Lord, as we continue to come into more and more understanding that you would do what only God can do. Now, Father Eshbara, Da Sandra Oshimari, Da Sondra De Eshbara, Da Sondra Oshimari, Da Da Basandra Oven India De Biada, Rosamara Da Sandra Oven India De Biada Basara Da Sandra De, Rosabara Basondo Shira Da Da Basandra Oven India Do, Roba Da Sandra Oven India De Biada Border Da Sandra Oven India, Roba Da Da Basandra Oshimari Da Da Basandra Oshimari Da Bara Sondo. Roda Shimara de Smara de the Besundra Ushmira Dodo. Roba de Shimara de Sandra on in there to be at the Basara Dada. Roba Dada Basande. Father, I thank you, Lord, for how you have touched Eric's uncle. And Lord, it's a miracle, Lord, how strong he is talking, Lord, after having a major heart attack, Lord, and having to be resuscitated three times on the way to the hospital. Father, I thank you, Lord, that you are bringing him out. And Lord, I thank you, Lord, for his faith, Lord. And how you are trusting Esha, Rosso, Reshe, Rande, Rapa, Sondo, Eshe, Rosso, Rande, Rasa, Espa, Rondo, Shera, Dondo, Shiro, Anse, Ransa, Roto, Eshbe, Rande, Sande, Oso, Ispa, Rondo, Ispa, Rondo, Seto, Espa, Reso, Espa, Rondo, Shirada, Sande. Father, come against strokes. Esparana Sando Oshira de Sando Oshimara de Roman in the Edebe Sundo Oshimara de Basande. Cerebral palsy. Rosubara Sondo Oshira de Basondo. Ishira de Basande Rada Sandra de Adam. Muscular dystrophy. Isho. Receive that of Sondo. Eshira de Azande Ishmara do. Radabara Sando Oshimara de Tabara Sondo Shira. Rosso be shando o smira de san rodoso. Rodo o smira de san do o smira da san do da. Rebe de san do o smira de san do o nindio do. Rosso bara de san do o smira da da basande. But we come against paralysis. Rada bara da basan do o smira de san do o nindio de gi. Rosso be shimara de a tibis mara 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 de a tibis m
Ruba de Shere de Sindo, Spirit, Adaba Sunday. Rosabara de Sindo, O Spirit, O Sandro. Ruba de Shimara de Basondo, Shirada. Rosa de Shimara de Timis Marade de Bosodo. Ruba de Andro Bunela Bosondo, Shirada. Rede Bosondo, O Shimara de Sondo, Menino. Ruba de Shimara de Sando, O Spirit, de Bosondo. Ruba de Sindo, O Spirit, de Sando, O Menino. Roba da la basando, shira da la basando, open India. Roda bishando, shmir da la basando, shmir de. Roda shmir de sendo, shmir de de basola. Roda bala la sando, shira de sendo, o shmir de. Roba de India de bia da basando, o shmir de obada. Roba de de basando, o shmir de de basando de. Roba de shira de sendo, o shmir de basande. Father, let the full force, Lord of the miraculous, is to my son to open into the Vida. Roba de Shara de Sin to open into the Vida. Roba de Shara de Sin to open into the Vida. Roba de Shara de Sin to open into the Vida. Roba de Shara de Sin to open into the Vida. Roba de Shara de Sin to open into the Vida. Father, I ask that Shemara de Sin to that you will saturate and permeate, Lord. Two houses, Lord, in front of me, Lord, and two houses behind me, Relasa, Reshere Sendro, Smirada Basande. And Lord, bind and reverse everything, Lord, that they have tilled the ground up with. Eshere de Sendro, Shirada Basando, Shirada, Rosmara de Sendro, Mindio de Bia, Robert de Basando, Shirada Basande. And Lord, shake the households, Lord, of those that call me today. Ishere de sendo, shere alada. Rede be shondo, shere alaba sande. Rode be ande raba alaba sande. And Lord, even shake the households, Lord, of those, Lord, that represent them. Rede e shere al sande, shere de sondo. Rode be ande basondo, shere de sabarado. Rode be shere alaba sande, shere alaba sande. And Lord, we just rebuke that person, Lord, that my son saw shoot in the air, Lord. And that would even put the things, Lord, that was put on Facebook. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you bring that person under conviction, Lord. Put them under conviction, Lord, for what they're doing, Lord, for they are mocking your spirit. They are mocking your move, Lord. Oh, Lord, they have a form of godliness, Lord, but they did not power. They did not have power, Lord, by the Basundo. They share their syndrome and their, Lord, they are wavering, Lord, between two opinions. They share their syndrome and their syndrome, Lord, they are wavering, Lord, between two opinions. They share their syndrome and their syndrome, Lord, they are wavering, Lord, between two opinions. They share their syndrome and their syndrome, Lord, they are wavering, Lord, between two opinions. They share their syndrome and their syndrome, Lord, they are wavering, Lord, between two and Lord, I just pray, Lord, Ishimara of Zondo, Oshimira de Basondo, Lord of Ishondo, Oshimira de Samara de Basondo. Help us, Lord, Ishimara de Samara de to enlarge our territory, enlarge our borders. Ishimira de Basondo, Oshimira de Basondo. And Father, bring that increase in the Basondo, Shira de Sindhi. Robert de Bishondo, Shira de Sandro on India. Robert de Basondo, Shira de Sandro on India to be and Father, reveal, reveal, Lord, reveal, 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 reveal. And Lord, I pray for that unction, Lord, to be over that doorpost, and to be over every doorpost, Lord, in that building, Lord. And Lord, Rodo do do re de sendo o shere da sendo de. Rodo ba la ba sendo o shere de sendo o mene de o do. Rodo be shundo o shere de sendo o mene de o de biya. Rodo ba la ba sendo o shere de sendo o mene de o de biya. Father, I pray, Lord, let it be as it was. When I had my daughter on that doorway, Lord. E shere de la sendo o shere de sendo de. Rodo be el da ba sendo o shere de sendo de. Lord, help us, Lord, to do things, Lord, that are pleasing in your sight. Rede shundo, shere de sindro, omen in dio de biado. Robert alabasando, shere alabasando, no way. Rodo, shere de sindro, o shmere de sandro de. Robert alabasando, shere da, de reso, omen in dio do. Robert de shindro, omen in dio de biado, de reso, 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 de reso
the Lord would ask about or just about or there that's under on in the eye. The Lord we even pray, Lord, Ishma Rajabasa, it tell me, Lord, she is a Shema, Rosabo Shima, Ishima de Sandra O Shimara Dito, Rob Ishimara de Samara Dio to be a Sandra Do. Robishimara de Sandra O in India to be a do. Robishimara there to be a Samara Dio to be a Sondo. Robishimara de Samara to be a Samara Dio to be a double Sodo. Robishimara de Sandra O in India to be a double so. Robadala Basundo, Shiradala Basundo, Shmirala. Robert Shimera de Vesmara de to be a Samara Don Troman in you. Robert Shimera de Smera de Vesmara de to be a Samara Dolo. Robert Shimera de Vesmara de Vesmara de to be a Samara Dolo. Robert Shimera de Vesmara de Vesmara de to be a Samara Dolo. Robert Shimera de Vesmara de Vesmara de to be a Samara Dolo. Robert Shimera de Vesmara de Vesmara de to be a Samara Dolo. Robert Shimera de Vesmara de Vesmara Robination bear to 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 Romanesh to bear the best of more to be a Samara Dolo Minisabo. Romanesh to bear the best of Mara Dolo to be a Samara Dolo Massa. Romanesh to bear the best of Mara Dolo to be a Samara Dolo to be a Samara Dolo Massa. Romanesh to bear the best of Mara Dolo to be a Samara Dolo to be a Samara Dolo Massa. Romanesh to bear the best of Mara Dolo to be a Samara Dolo Massa. Romanesh to Romanesh to bear the best of Mara Dolo to be a Samara Dolo to be a Samara Dolo. Roman is the best of tomorrow, there tomorrow, somehow, tomorrow, do them. Father, take them into the realm of the spirit, Lord, as they smile. As they pray in the spirit realm, Lord, let them have visions, Lord, as they smile tomorrow. Roman is the best of tomorrow, there to be a smile, do them. Roman is the best of tomorrow, there to be a smile, do them. Roman is the best of tomorrow, there to be a smile, do them. Father, thank you for every miracle, Lord. Not just physical miracles, Lord, but miracles of the Christian. Roshi Mayor, they lost the Mara Dale to Mills Mara Dale to Mara Dale. Roman Esha Bell, the best Mara Dale to Mills Mara Dale to Mara Dale. Roman Esha Bell, the best Mara Dale to Mills to Mills to Mara Dale. Roman Esha Bell, the best Mara Dale to Mills to Mara Dale to Mills to Mara Dale. Roman Esha Bell, the best Mara Dale to Mills to Mara Dale to Mills to Mara Dale. Roman Esha Bell, the best Mara Dale to Mills to Mara Dale to Mills to Mara Dale. Father, we're not Samara, there's Samara, there to be tomorrow, Sunday, or Samara, though. Roman is your bell, the bear Samara, there to be Samara, there tomorrow, do. Roman is your bell, the bear Samara, there to be tomorrow, Sunday, do. Roman is your bell, the bear Samara, there to be Samara, there to be tomorrow. Roman is your bell, the bear Samara, there to be Samara, there to be tomorrow, do. Roman is your bell, the bear to be Samara, there to be Samara, do. Father, let Ishmael there tomorrow. There's sun to open in there to be a doubt. Roman Ishmael there to be a Samara there to be a tomorrow, do do. Father, let there be a full reversal. Rada Sabah. Rada Badada Asande. Reshimir the most tomorrow there to be a tomorrow. Ishibe son to Oshmir, the best son to Omanija to be the best Maradodo. Robert Adam Asande is married to be some Marado of Marado. Roshmir to be shown to Oshmir, the last Marado of Mafondo. Robert Ashend to Omanija to be a smart there to be a smart of Mafondo. Robert Shan to Oshmar and Tamara Tamara sent to Oshmir and Obasondo. Robert and Obasondo Oshmir and Alasanto Oman in the other bar. Father, he was ten steps ahead of the adversary. Rosa Mosa Bosondo Oshir, the center Oman in the other. And she was sent to Oshmar and the center Oshmir and Alasanto Oman in the other. Rosa Mosa Bosondo Oshmir and the center Oman in the other. Rosa Basante Oshmir de Besondo Oshmir La Esmer de Besondo Oshir de Sinto Oman in the Oman. Father work Radasabat Radasand Oman in the Oman. Esmer de Sinto Oshmir de Besondo Oshmir. Roma de Sinto Oman in the Oman de Besondo Oshmir de Besondo Oshmir. Rosa Mora de Sinto Oman in the Oman de Besondo. Rosso, Shamara, they send to Oshmirada. 
Rosso, Redesir, Rabasson, Doshirada, Rodabala, Lavasande, Oshmir, Del Sandro, Rosso, Boshimar, and the Sandro, Omni, the Father, Lord, let your spirit, Lord, reside in the schools, on the jobs, in the houses, Ishmael, and this, my, to a glass of my, Rose Moore, and the Sindra, Oshmir, and I, Robert, and I, Basando, Oshmir, and I, Basando. Father, do what no man can do. The Lord, let them say, Lord, this is a miracle. Bless him, Rosso Bessabor and the Sindra Omnizero. Rosso Shiradasa Basondo Shirana. Rosso and Osmar and the Sindra Omnizero. Rosso Bashan de Bashondo Shirad the Sindra. Rosso Bashan de Osmir and the Sindra Omnizero. Rosso was shunned to Oshmir, they sent to Oman India the beer. Rosso be shunned to Oshmar, there to be sons of Oman India. Rosso be shunned to Oshmir, that of a son to Oman India the beer. Yes, Lord, Oshmar, a dollar of a son. Rosa, Rossi, 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 Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you. Lord, I just give you praise and honor and glory, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for turning it around. Lord, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, said Lord. So get it at the four sides of Rukin, so get it at Rukin, so get it at Rohas and Jesus. So get it at zero. Not by my side, no, by power. So it's not by his side. But by my spirit, so get it at zero. Not by my power, but by my spirit. Not by my power, but by my spirit. Not by my power. But by my spirit, save the Lord. Jackie, not by my might, nor by power, but by my spirit, save the Lord. Sukura <laughs> So, <laughs> God's going to give someone a miracle It's concerning a house. Many years ago, God gave a woman a miracle about a house. Her grandchild had left some kind of uh, fry thing, fry daddy or something on. The house caught on fire. And it was a new house she wanted. But she didn't want to pay the price. And she was sitting in this very room, not 10 feet from where I'm sitting now, over in the corner. And she said, Brother Drone, I found the house I want, but I don't want to pay the price that they're asking. Well, guess what? I never asked her what was the price she wanted to pay. I just told her. I said, Doc, I'm going to agree with you in prayer right now. 
And whatever it is that you want to pay for the house, I believe God's going to give it to you. I walked across this same room where we are now, over to the corner. But that was where Dot Lisa loved to sit. And I grabbed her hand, her right hand. And I prayed with her. Matthew 18, 19 says, If any two shall woo, agree, touch and agree, you felt that. If touching anything, and ask it in my Father's name, I will do it for you. I agree with God. For what, I didn't ask for either now. What was the price she was willing to pay for that house? And I think it was a week later. That came back with the testimony. She said, Brother Drone, she said, I told the real estate agent what I was willing to pay for that house. The real estate agent laughed at her in her face. And said, that's a brand new house nobody's ever lived in. They will not accept that price. She said, well, that's the price I'm willing to pay. And I'm not going to give the price they want. She said, make a bid on what I told you. Well, the real estate agent went to the builder and made the price. Gave it to him. Guess what? They accepted the price. And the price that they accepted was $9,900 less than the asking price. Now, to this very day, I never asked Doc what she wanted to pay. I never asked what the original price was. I never asked her what she was willing to pay. I just agreed with her. So even though I'm not physically where you are, you know what it is you're willing to pay in this housing situation. If you will just believe God right now, I believe with you whatever the price is that you are willing to pay. And God will give you a miracle just like he ain't God. God has no respect of person. See, when I was praying, all of a sudden, that situation came and up and bubbled up my spirit. So I know God's got me saying it because of somebody in a housing situation. But you got to work a miracle for you. So whatever it is, be it a rent situation or a buying situation, you've got it. You just believe God and go forth with what it is that you have. And God's going to honor your faith and give you that miracle of provision. So you wonder what I was talking about that earlier about the financials, if that would apply. Yes, it applies. So take it. And Father, we just bind the enemy, Lord, that we're trying to rob and steal. The enemy comes dumped forth to steal, kill, and destroy. But you said you, the Son of God, come that we would have more life and have that life more abundantly. Lord, I speak abundant life. And I bind every witch, every wizard, every soothsayer, every astrology, Lord. We bind every chant, every incantation. Lord, we bind every false Sunday, every false altar. We bind every candle, every burning of incense. We bind every black fast. We bind every sacrifice of blood. And we cover it all in the blood of Jesus, the spotless Lamb of God. And Lord, we set the captives free. We set the captives free. And Lord, we just thank you for it. We thank you, Lord, for every turnaround. We thank you, Lord, for every miracle of provision. We thank you, Lord, for taking care of our adversaries. 
We thank you, Lord, for leading us and guiding us in all truth. We thank you for enlarging our territory. We thank you for taking sickness from the midst of us. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for all seven blessings. And Lord, as always, we give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. For all the glory is thine. All the glory is thine. Esparadasande. All the glory is thine. Robeshondo Shirada Basande. All the glory is thine. Every Asho Tore and under Esparada Sande. Sukero Sakare Sokoro. Sikoro Si. So I just thank you. 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 Lord, I thank you for doing what no man can do. And all the glory is yours, Lord. All the glory belongs to you. Ishima, solo. All the Lord, I said that. All the glory belongs to you, O God. Ishima, that's on the Lord. Lord, reach back and redeem time. Lord, redeem time. Father, redeem the time. Lord, redeem the time for all the prophecies. There's a spoken to people and spoken over people. Father, redeem the time. 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 Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for doing what man cannot do. Thank you, Jesus. I know you you feel Alessandro, God's presence. You're feeling the glory of God where you are right now. I pray that this presence rests with you throughout your house or you might be on the job wherever you are. Thank you, Jesus. Robert Ishmael, the Bishamara, there to be a Samara, 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 there to be a
Father, to be 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 Father, let it be real. I survived this, the boy, and that's the Maradale to my son. Rosa Bosa Maradale to be a Smaradale to be a Smaradale, but I know. Roma del Samaritan to be a Smaradale to be a Smaradale to be a Smaradale. Father, I ask that this same presence, Lord, be made manifest in that household that you sent me to the spirit realm so many years ago. We said, call it, so all rules, see, call it, tell it the entire house, on the entire ground. Lord, I pray the same as our glory, Lord, will manifest over where I saw where the rituals have taken place. On that same farmland, Lord. Who did it up so great so share of that? Sukura Kresa, Ero, Ri, Raro, Sero. Let the glory settle right there, Lord. Let the glory settle there. Father, let that same glory manifest in Virginia, Lord. That man that I've seen for years, Lord. In that neighborhood, Lord. Let, let your eyeshadow of my soul and my son be there. Rosa Shemara de Sandra Omnindu. Father, let Ishmara de Sandra over there, Zabasunda. Father, in Tarboro, Lord, Radala Basundu. Let your Ishmara de Sandi. Let your glory, Rodo Sumara de Sundu. Out throughout, Rodo Basundu, Ishmara de Basundu. On the very ground, Zolo Shemara de Basundu. And let fear hit them, right out of our soul. Eshimira de Sando, let them be totally confused and confounded. Rose me shondro Eshimira de Sando, Rode me la Sando Eshimira. Father, set straight and permanent. Eshimira de Sando, Rade me la Sando Eshimira de Sando. Who is Sando? Who is Sando? And let those Lord who have mocked you, Lord, bada basundo shira de sindro ori in the other me, rose me shimara de samara de sindro. Sikro 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 so. Who can I say kore so? Lord, we just thank you, Ishimara de sindro ori in the other me. Father, bring revelation, Lord, as we read and meditate on the word, Lord. Open this word unto us, Lord. Even as we seek mysteries. Oh, he said a deep column of the deep. And Lord, rebuke those Lord who try to be in the mischief over the telephone, Lord. Let everything reverse on them. Let a full reversal hit them in Jesus' name. Rosa be sure the center only in the be a Rosa Mary the center only in the be a Lord, I thank you for complete turnaround. Thank you, Jesus. So well, I know you feel God's presence where you are, and I believe many of you have had some visions, and God has really moved upon you tonight, and I believe he's going to continue to deal with you tonight, even before you lay down, but certainly in the night season. Uh, as you do go to sleep, I believe some of you are going to have all kind of vivid dreams and visions. And I pray that the gift of interpretation of dreams will be made manifest in your life. And I pray that you will even understand the visions and the mysteries that will come to you. 
I pray that God continue to bless you, keep you as you continue to honor him. I pray that these seven miraculous blessings of the Passover will manifest in your life, in your household. So just continue to trust him. And you know, just, just go back and just read this chapter. Remember, the only part of the Bible that works for you is the part that you believe. Sometimes people haven't believed it because they haven't read it. <laughs> so they don't always know that it's, it's available for them. They don't always know it's in the book. So just look for just look for great manifestation. And you'll catch us you know, Sunday. Um, Tell people about the you know, our Facebook page at Clays in Greensboro. You know, visit the page with some regularity. Tell your friends. Tell people that you know are hungry for God. Because there are people out in the body that are hungry from all different denominations. We're just ministering to the body. And we're here to try to be a blessing. So tell people about what's going on. And again, we really do want to hear the testimonies. So, get in touch with us. And, uh, you know, just tune in. And just look for God to continue to bless you. And to bring you into that place that he wants you. And uh, we'll catch you Sunday. So until the next time. May the Lord be with you. So Rusi Kara Rusi. So Rusi Kara Rusi. So Rusi Kara Rusi.